What is up all of you, I guess, PPL type people? This is Tom. I'm here bringing you guys my introduction and my first week in the PPL. Yes, Pokemon Premier League. There it is. Yeah, I actually ended up taking over for Mono and his team. Yeah, he basically said that he wasn't really interested in playing anymore. And he and I obviously are friends as I'm sure some of, some of you are aware from the GBA. Uh, and basically, he and I decided to say, hey, you want to take over the team? I said, sure, why not? Made a few changes up to the team, and uh, I'll explain those in a minute. But first of all, first I just want to say that if the audio sounds strange, it's because I'm recording at my, at my job. I'm in a big, open, uh, kind of like room, warehouse-looking thing, and um, you know, a lot of uh, like ambient sounds, and there's a, a heater going, so that might you hear, might hear that in the background. Uh, so... It's not my usual recording environment, but hey, gotta do what you gotta do, especially when uh, you know recording and prepping for matches and playing matches all kind of takes over for your actual life. So that is kind of where we're at. I'm gonna go over the team real quick before I hop into the match. This is uh, against Jack, aka Don Fanatic, part of the uh, season three of the D League, as well as commissioner of the PPL and someone whom I uh, have a lot of respect for just based on he conducts himself in the PPL very nice guy and someone who I uh, genuinely respect as a person the team that Mono ended up drafting you'll see on the right side real quick over uh, Jack's player's face is Landorus T which is a Z user Mega Beedrill Tapafini Kamo'o Gengar Magnezone Sneasel Mesprit Rhyperior Typhlosion which is also the second Z user and Lilligan now, this is a little bit different than what Mono drafted. He actually had Mega Pinsir over Mega Beedrill. I dropped Mega Pinsir because I can't be fucking bothered to do return or frustration every single week and have to deal with happiness values, whereas I just want a U-turn pivot. Uh, very hard-hitting Mon. I don't care if it's, you know, 25% weak to Stealth Rock. Shout out to the Mega Hound Doom, my GBA team. I also dropped uh, Typhlo I dropped Pukamuku in place of Typhlosion, uh, which is also his Z user, I think, Mono's uh, point to Z Pukamuku was to get a Z Memento off to kind of help Landorus, Beedrill, Komo'o, something like that set up, even Rhyperior. And then finally, I ended up drafting, dropping Sunflora and picking up Lilligant because I had some extra points, and I figure Lilligant is a grass type that I actually uh, use and I bring, rather than, um, you know, Sunflora, which I think is, well, in the nicest way possible, hot fucking trash. So... That's the team. Uh, if you guys are familiar with my GBA team, which I'm sure most of you are, this is a lot like my GBA team. Landorus, you know, Pivot, Mega Beedrill, kind of a lot, lot like Scissor. Uh, Komo'o is there. You know, a bulky-ish water type. Feeny, uh, Defogger, like Rotom. You know, Gengar, which is just much of a, a special attacker, special breaker. You know, Magnezone, also Pivot. Um, you know, then we have like Mesprit, Rhyperior, things that either were or are or both on the team. And then Typhlosion, I feel, could be just another breaker if I want to choose to use it that way. So this is a little bit different than what I'm used to, but I'm not necessarily mad about it, mostly because I feel like this team is going to operate very well with how I intend on using it. And we'll see that right now. So we're going to go into the team. We end up bringing uh, Mesprit this week, uh, Gengar, Landorus, uh, Tabu, Fini. We have Magnezone as well as Rhyperior. Now, to go over the team real quick, we have a three attack Stealth Rock, uh, Colberberry, Mesprit, that is for Dark Pulse or Crunch, uh, Lucario. Obviously, the Psychic could do massive damage across most of Jack's team. His team consists of Jirachi, Clefable, Z Salamence, Arcanine, Delmize, Gastrodon, Mega uh, Aerodactyl, Lucario, and Raichu, which is also a Z user, we see he brings uh, Raichu, Gastrodon, Z Mints, Arcanine, Lucario, and Aerodactyl, Mega Aerodactyl. So he doesn't bring Delmize, Clef, or Jirachi, two of which I was super concerned with, Clefable and Delmize specifically, and you'll see that when I explain Landorus. But the Mesprit is there solely for the Lucario, so it can't, you know, just go for Crunch and hit the vast majority of my team because, you know, the Steel obviously threatens out things like Rhyperia, things like Tapu Fini, but then the Fighting also threatens out things like Magnezone. So it, it's a, it's, it could be a problem for my team if I don't, you know, deal with it the right way. Then I end up bringing uh, Scarf Gengar. This is the check, uh, Dragon Dance Salamence. It's cut having Energy Ball. For Gastrodon, it has Shadow Ball and Sludge Wave, just good stab, and then it has Icy Wind to uh, neutralize the plus one uh, speed from Salamence, and then allows me to uh, kind of knock it out. Maybe if he's not running bulk investment, just depends on if he if rocks are up and have affected Salamence at that point. Next up, we have a Rock Polish, 
Ground DMZ, Swords Dance, and Stone Edge, Landorus. This is very similar to other sets that I've ran in the past, I guess, with my GBA team. But it, the idea here is that I was split between Rockium and Ground DMZ because Rockium hits uh, things like Mega Aerodactyl and it's a confirmed kill. But Groundium is better for the likes of Gastrodon. It's better for the likes of Clefable, especially if he did end up bringing it. Whereas Rockium is kind of more of a, um, a safe, but Groundium is more of a guaranteed kill, so to say. Next up, then we have Tabufini. This is going to be full defensive, full HP, a little bit of special defense. It's going to be carrying, uh, I believe, uh, Defog, because rocks heavily affect this team, especially when it comes to damage calcs. It's going to be running uh, Haze to get rid of uh, stat boosts from the likes of potentially uh, Mega Arrow, Lucario, Salamence. Not in that order, just in general. And then, of course, Moonblast and Surf. And fine, next up, we have a... Uh, it was initially a second Scarfer, Magnezone, but it ended up changing to more of a sub-leftover set with Analytic and ended up being Monish just based on Jack speed tiers. Um, it's going to be carrying Flash Cannon, that was in that was Fable. It's going to be carrying T-Bolt because it's just good damage. And it has uh, HP Grass for Raichu as well as uh, Gastron. And finally, we have a Rock Polish. I want to say Double Dance. No, Rock Polish Weakness Policy, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Rhyperia. Because this team really doesn't like ground types. And I know the Rock ground coverage does threaten his team extremely well. So I'm going to use, use that to my advantage. So looking at the matchup based on what Jack brought, I don't expect him to lead off with anything but Mega Arrow or Raichu. Mostly because I feel like, you know, Arcanine and Gastron are both going to be responses to my uh, my offensive threats. Mance and Lucario are probably going to be some sort of set of variants. Mega Arrow can get up rocks and, uh, and of course Mega Evolve, perhaps get off some good damage. And Raichu of course can pivot and is faster than the like every member of my team if anything is not scarfed or hasn't been set up yet. So that's what I expect he's going to lead with. I'm just going to lead off with Mesprit mostly because I just want my rocks up. And I feel like it's my best lead regardless. I'm not going to lead off with Rhyperior or Landorus because I need to get some information about what is on his team. Magnezone is a good secondary lead, but, you know, Feeny and Gengar also are just going to be responses to some of the things that I feel are problems on his team. So, God damn it, Rogue, for making this intro so long. Anyway... Thank you to Rogue for recording my match, and thank you to, I want to say Pablo for jetting my team. Uh, I know he's part of the GBA jenners, but I also need my team built uh, in a certain amount of time, and I figured he was my best uh, person around to, to do so. So, oh, shit, this is still on. This is still slow. Hold on. Sorry about that. I was trying to get a thumbnail, and I never realized that I kept the video slow. So, like I said, lead off with Mesprit. He's going to lead off with Raichu. I love this nickname for Mesprit. I was going to use it for the GBA, mostly because he looks like that guy that, that made that awful Gucci Gang song. Look it up. I'm not even getting it. It's, it's like such a close resemblance. It's not even funny. I'm just going to lead off my rocks, and he's going to go for Toxic. I expected Volt Switch here. Maybe he'd be able to get in something, but I, I don't know if you want to do that, basically because Mesprit has so many different opportunities to go for different moves and uh we see here that he does end up being a life orb set so i suspect that he's gonna you know be fast enough to outpace uh pretty much everything on my team probably up to yeah even like close to mega b or so but he is faster than everything i kind of just want to get damage off and even with the life orb damage stacking up i figure i can get in magma zone here on a resisted t-bolt and potentially if he doesn't have hp ground because i kind of think he'll have like surf grass knot uh and thunderbolt and we already saw a toxic so like no volt switch i figure just it i could i could at least sub up on this and potentially uh go for like if you try to switch out go for hp grass that doesn't end up happening whatsoever because it just knocks me out of hp ground very smart on his end but losing magna zone right here doesn't really bother me all that much uh, because it allows me to get in uh, gengar it makes the match a little bit harder maybe i should have scouted for the hp ground but i didn't really have a lot of things that wanted to come in on raichu even Especially if you wanted to go for Surf there. I didn't know much about Raichu and what uh, hidden power value he'd run. And I'm okay with losing uh, Magnus on there. Just based on how slow it was. And couldn't really do much outside of hitting this Gastron, which could recover. And of course, Earth Power and Raichu, which we know at HP Ground. I'm going to go for Shadow Ball. I was so click uh, so close to clicking uh, Energy Ball there. And it would have been a great like two-shot on this uh, I, I Spadef Gastrodon. He had Rindaberry, so it didn't necessarily matter. Uh, the first one wouldn't done all that much damage, but then the second one, um, I believe, did like 60%. So maybe based on the roll of the first one and the rocks damage. We don't know, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go for uh, Moonblast as he went off uh, with an Earth Power. 
Moonblast is not doing all that much damage, but I am fishing for the special attack drops. It's not a, a negative thing, but it does, of course, allow me to not take all that much damage from whether he goes for Earth Power, whether he has Ice Beam or Scald, and of course, we see Sludge Wave right there, and I, I know 100% that he has Recover. Like, every Gastrodon runs Recover, and in this uh, case especially, he needs to have it just so that he can uh, take the hits and live, uh, for the most part, across the vast majority of my team. I'm going to get in Rhyperior here. And I know this seems like a very strange switch, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bait out to see whether he has Ice Beam or Scald in his last move slot. I'm going to switch out, um, and if he goes for Scald here, uh, it wouldn't do all much damage to Gengar. I don't want to go right back on a Fiend and take more damage, um, especially because like Earth Power, Special Defense Drops, and stuff like that. And also, I, I thought that if he went for Scald, Gengar would be able to take it. It's not super effective. would do about 40-45% uh, from it from a special defensive Gastrodon with no uh, attack investment. But Gengar here, I'm going to go for Energy Balls. He brings in Arcanine. It's not really a good switch because of the rocks. If rocks weren't up, oh yeah, 100%, this would be a very good switch for him to make, uh, you know, pretty much all the time. I'm going to save Gengar here, though, because I know that this is a defensive Arcanine for the most part to take on uh, Landorus as well as... Actually, I think that's it. And... I know that Gengar is good for the late game for, of course, Salamence. Um, I'm going to switch out here into my my Mesprit. And I know that I, I want to save Mesprit. Or I didn't want to save Mesprit, I should say, but I want to save Gengar. Mesprit was just kind of sack off here because I didn't know what he was, physical or special. If we went, to, if we went for Blitz or, or Crunch, I'd be dead anyway based on the toxic damage and the damage it took from the Raichu. And it, it's just good information overall. But because he went for Burn Up and he has no typing right now, there's no drawback for me going uh, for a Moonblast. If he goes into Gastrodon or he stays in, it's just going to be doing about 25%. And this Morning Sun really isn't that detrimental, I would say. And it, he can't really switch anything into a even a defensive Moonblast because, as you see here, like I said, it's doing about 30%. After the Leftovers Recovery, about 25%. But this damage is, nothing, is not awful because the range that he was at before the Morning Sun is where he's at right now. He's going to switch. He's going to go back on the Gastrodon. And right here, I'm starting to think get the wheels spinning in my head about how I can get this match out of a Gastrodon, Arcanine, Feeny switch around and end up getting in my Rhyperior on, uh, against his Gastrodon because I don't think he... If he had Scald, he would have went for it when Gengar was in. So I'm going to keep going for Moonblast. I'm going to keep fishing for the special attack drops. I do end up getting one. Now, that was a 30% uh, chance every time I clicked Moonblast. Obviously, I got two, which kind of sucked. He does go for Ice Beam here, I guess expecting Rhyperior to come in like it did last time. Because, uh, obviously, he could have clicked Sludge Wave there. But at minus one, and I know right now that he's going to go for Recover because he needs to. In the case, of, uh, if I get a crit or something. I'm going to go into Rhyperior. Uh, he's going to go back up to about full. It's not going to be full, like, you know, overall, but it's going to be enough that I know for a fact that I can uh, just click Rock Polish. I am faster than this Gastrodon. And after this Rock Polish, it means I am faster than everything that's not Mega Aerodactyl because unfortunately, uh, while Jolly Rhyperior does end up being faster than a Timid Jolteon, it's not faster than a Jolly or, or maybe, maybe it is faster than Adamant Arrow, but not Jolly Arrow. It does go for Earth Power. I know he didn't have Scald. I knew he wouldn't be able to knock me out. Same thing with Ice Beam. This allows me to go for Earthquake. He could have started switching around if he went into Mega Arrow there. It would have been a severely aggressive play, but he at the range I was at, he wouldn't be able to knock me out. And we're going to see that here. Because of the special attack drops, or drop, I should say, just one, when he went for Earth Power, it didn't put me in range. That Earthquake here from Mega Aerodactyl will be able to knock me out. This will net me two kills with Rhyperior. And it's nice seeing this Rhyperior actually work as compared to my match against John and the GBA, which it was roughly the same set, I would say. But getting, you know, seeing this Earthquake, it doesn't knock me out. But being able to knock out this Mega Arrow with an Ice Punch does allow much more breathing room for the likes of Gengar, as well as my, um, my Landorus. It allows me to Rock Polish up. I don't know what his coverage moves are, but I know if, that, if I'm not at, at max HP, a... Tough Claws boosted, maybe not Tough Claws boosted, but just in general, a Stone Edge from Mega Arrow when it's not at minus one. Does have the chance to kill, and I really wasn't about that. He doesn't go for Bullet Punch. I thought maybe he'd have Bullet Punch or Extreme Speed. Didn't matter. I wasn't switching out because nothing on my team really wanted to take a Bullet Punch at that point. I didn't have Mesprit. I didn't have Magnezone, and nothing really wanted to come in, even Lando, in the case that he uh, 
you know, he was like Scarf with Ice Punch or something stupid like that. Uh, wasn't really about that, and I wanted Landorin for free more often than not. Now, you see, I'm just going to pause real quick. You see that he switches there. And it's really funny because I'm not faster than this Lucario. But I also know that Landorus is one base speed higher than Lucario. So say he's Jolly Max, or say he's Jolly Creeping, whatever it is that he can, at base 90, which I think on my team is, is a max speed Tabafini. Say he's Creeping that, and I bring in Lando. I just baited him out, and I am max HP Impish. Uh, or I'm sorry, max HP, max defense. I think I am Impish, but I might be Jolly for, for speed purposes. Even so, I just kind of threatened him out just based solely on how I brought it in plus the speed tier. And this allows me to just rock polish right up. Even if he went for Ice Punch, it only did about 58 to 65% from a Life Orb Lucario. And it still would have made me faster. Uh, obviously, it would have made me a little bit weaker. And this would have been a problem kind of like later on in the match. But it doesn't matter because I am going to go right for the Rock EMZ. I know that after the Rock's damage, he is not in range for an Earthquake. Earthquake would have to be a, probably a top like 10% roll from just a normal base Earthquake to knock out this Arcanine, especially if he has max HP, max defense, bold, which is what he ends up being. So I didn't want to risk that. And I realized I look at his team, not a lot of things that are remaining really care about a Tectonic Rage. But him bringing it in so aggressively, I know this is probably his check for this Landorus. Uh, but I'm just going to go for Tectonic Rage. I'm going to knock him right out. He and I talked after the, the match, and he said that he was a little surprised that I was running Groundium over Rockium. He said Rockium was a better a better bring for the likes of uh, like Mega Arrow. And, also, and he said Groundium didn't make sense because of the fact that he had Delmize, which I didn't care if he had Delmize or not. I had enough things on my team to deal with Delmize that he didn't really have on his team to deal with Landorus, if that makes sense. He goes into his uh, his Salamence here, and I know for a fact that I am at minus two, and I really don't want to F around with damage rolls and him potentially setting up to plus one, and then if I have to switch out, he's at plus two, he's faster than the rest of my team, and I lose. So, not about that. He's just going to go right for his uh, his uh, Super Sonic Sky Strike as I bring in Gengar. This was pretty much just a cover-all switch. If he tried to set up to plus one, I am faster. After the Rock's damage, we see that he is... Um, the Icy Wind would knock him out from his Scarf Gengar. And if he just went for a move, I sack Gengar, oh well, I can get in my my Landorus and I can get him down to minus one because he's not boosted, he's not moxie. And this ensures that I can get up another Rock Polish. And it doesn't really matter what he goes for, whether he goes for Ice Vang, Ice Beam, or Hydro. Live them all, I can get, I become faster than him. Just got his Stone Edge and we're good to go from there. But he's going to go for Hydro. It is going to connect. I'm going to go for my Rock Polish here because that will allow me to be faster than both the Salamence and uh, Lucario and Raichu. And I know that right here, I could probably win with Landorus is what I'm going to try to do. Um, just got to hit a Stone Edge here, which is what I fortunately end up doing. This is going to knock out the Salamence here because I'm not at minus one. And, you know, obviously Landorus is powerful enough that when I'm hitting a super effective move, more times than not, it's going to kill with that base 145 attack uh, stat. He's going to go to Lucario here. Uh, and he's going to go for Bullet Punch. It, not in range. I know if I was at about 15%, I would have been with a high roll. But I think it, the roll was like 10 to 16% from a Life Orb Bullet Punch, uh, Lucario. And I'm gonna go for Earthquake, just knock it right out. I knew it was Life Orb, I knew it wasn't Air Balloon. If it was Air Balloon, I would've popped it before with something. But, you know, I knock him out with Earthquake. And then, unless Raichu has Extreme Speed, it actually doesn't even matter if he has Extreme Speed because the Life Orb damage coming in, or the Stealth Rock damage coming in, plus the Life Orb, he's gonna knock himself out. So, at worst case scenario, I went with a 1-0. But I'm gonna go for Earthquake, he doesn't have Extreme Speed, and if he did, that's a good meme. I'm gonna knock him out. It's gonna be a 2-0 victory for me. My first match in the PPL is going to be a victory against Jack, a.k.a. the Don Fanatic. Very good game. Very fun match. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to build with this team for the first time. Very um, very happy that I got to play Jack, someone who, you know, obviously I picked for the D-League. Got to watch in the D-League and thoroughly enjoyed his content, even though, you know, maybe his record wasn't the best. I'm going to sign off here. I'm going to get this video out as soon as possible. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will be bringing you guys my PPL matches every Monday or Tuesday based on how my work schedule goes. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave your comment, your feedback on my team as well as his team down, down in the comments. Uh, and hopefully you guys are excited for the rest of the PPL. I know my goal is maybe not to win because Mono did give me a 1-3 team after he ended up quitting because he's a, he's, a, he's a bastard like that. But he did give me a team that I like, a team that I feel like I can, I can be good with. And a team that has a lot of options in terms of offense, pivot, and uh, defensive capabilities, which is, you know, that's how I roll. So, next week, I have Omega Jolteon and his something Caracostas. I'm looking forward to that match. It's a little scary, but I can take it on. Um, and I'll see you guys then. Like I said, leave your comments. Let me know what you guys feel about the team. And I'll see you guys soon.